Austin, do you, do you see this? There's no salt on the ground. Isn't it amazing? Like, it rained all weekend. So nice. Washed it all away. Welcome to the Northeast, baby. The weather's getting presentable. <laughs> Guess who finally got to drive his dang car? This weekend, I drove it all around. On the E36 dad wagon. This thing rips, dude. The like dad wagon out and about. Out and about. It's weird. Right now, this car, as you guys know, he is a fully built S50 turbo. Like, it's just a casual looking car. I mean, it's a little casual. It's slammed on its ass, but you would forget that it has this gnarly drivetrain in it. I retuned it like three weeks ago. And I was like, you know what? It's on pump gas. Like, you know, it's got a small tire. I made it like. 420 horsepower 425 horsepower plenty dude this thing rips it is awesome car <laughs> like it made me really like e36s again <laughs> it's a little rubby in the rear as you can imagine but you know what they say drive it till the noise goes away that's what they say yeah you want to send me that little clip that you took over the weekend i'll send you that clip <laughs> It'll be fine. It's, 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 I've been making sure it's not hurting anything. Just got a small clearancing issue. It actually drives amazing. It thing rips. All right. So we were tempted to actually film a driving video. We just don't know how to do that. Soon. Soon. How do we film driving videos? This is me enjoying a car. Like, I don't know. It's hard from a content standpoint. I want you guys to realize I do drive my cars because that's my biggest stress is you guys just always chirp me for not driving my cars. But now it's driving season, so. Would a slower paced, more cinematic video be worthy or do we need to still make it fast paced and, and just rah, 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 crazy rah. entertaining? Yeah. What's the way to go about it? Let us know. But for now, we realize we're not gonna do it today because what we get to do today is we finally get to pick up the engine for my pro car. As you guys have seen, Spoon's been in the background going crazy on the shell, prepping it for, well, everything we have to do for it, right? Getting the cage in, the two front, all the bracing, everything is just the first start of the whole process. It has the front end fully reinforced and plated so we can get the tube front in and get the front end all locked in. Right now he's locking up the rear, so all the hero lines up and he goes to do the tube front and everything, the cage is in, like it's really getting it. But the next part of the process is getting the drivetrain in here and start mocking that all. We have to put the engine in the optimal position. We have to make a trans mount. We have to remake the tunnel, everything. And it all starts with well, getting our dang engine. So, today is the day. My buddy Seamus at Taylor Chassis Solutions up in Massachusetts has actually been putting the engine together for me. And well, today we get to go pick it up. So, let's hit the road. God bless. A little scraping here and there. Uh, well, that hurt the soul? That hurt me a little bit. Yeah. I'll get used to it. All right, so the big question is, oh, Jimmy, you're building this Pro Car S14. What engine is it gonna be? An SR? Probably not. <laughs> a KA? Definitely not. Really what it comes down to is, are we doing an LS or a JZ? We all know that. It's just every podium winning car at this point is LS, JZ, and then you got the weird ones in between. A VR38 would be, be, whatever, it's not that. So after this hour and a half drive, you guys will, uh, find out which which heart we are shoving in this poor little car Taylor chassis solutions in the cut. Seamus happens to be one of my best friends and he happens to run an incredible shop. So um, I kind of delegated the engine building process to him because I knew he was a man for the job so I can have a gangster worry for engine for the season. And um, well, today we have to pick it up. So let's go see what engine we're using. That car's perfect.
Big K series guy. Where you at, Spoon? <laughs> Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we can look at Seamus' cool stuff all day, but we have to get to the meat and potatoes here, and that is showing off the new engine for the Pro Car. And surprise, surprise, we got a 2JZ. What'd you guys think we're gonna put Alice in this thing? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> you guys know I love my JZs, and of course, we gotta keep the theme alive. LSs, we all know they work. They're like a cheat code, right? Instant power all the time. It, you, you could log them, do all this, and it's just a weapon. But to me, the JZ, has so much more personality that soul it has soul right it has soul and is it a hindrance compared to the ls who knows but i am willing to take that chance because man do i love my 2 J's. So, <laughs> this isn't just a normal 2j no this isn't just a no this is this got some more sauce to it It looks a little bare bones right now but let's talk about this let's get seamus to nerd out about it because um he built me something really cool here i didn't prep him for this at all <laughs> all right seamus Tell them about this short block we have right here and what makes it so fancy and special. Uh, 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 it's a 9.4 to 1 compression, mm -hmm. half mil over, so it's 86 and a half mil with a 3.4 liter stroker. Boom, that's the meat and potatoes right there. 3, 4, stroker 2, Jake, baby. Boom, more displacement for more. I was, I was hoping something uh, on the yeah. More displacement for more. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you finish it off. Instagram. It Fox. I mean, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was perfect. So you need the punch, dude. You know, you're gonna be on a really grippy tire. A real big boy tire. You're gonna need big boy displacement. So we got the 2J big block there for we you. What we have is a full BC lightweight package. They're cranking the rods and then uh, some fancy little pistons. I'm kidding. We got some good. Uh, tell them about the pistons. So these are a custom piston from Real Street. Um, they're their spec. I believe they're uh, manufactured by CP, but. They've spec'd their ringland thickness to be custom. I believe their venting is custom as well. They've got uh, coated skirts. They're and super highly rated. So we went with like a 9.4 to 1 compression. You can go higher if you want. You know, with modern turbos and modern fuel, it is possible. But for a, a baseline of doing a 3.4, it's a tried and true package. And with a good turbo on it, we should have no issues. So I'm super ecstatic about this. We should be able to rev this thing pretty damn high, which is good, even with this displacement, which is amazing. More RPM means more wheel speed or more use usable wheel speed which makes life a lot easier with drifting so we decided to go with a billet, billet main cap which is, kind of, which is kind of a must at this point it I mean, is a must yeah so what happens is especially now this is a seasoned block meaning it's not brand new which i prefer because you never know how they're going to set when they go through their first heat cycles sure. but uh, the main cap registers on the bases can sometimes get pushed out of whack and your cap will actually have mobility. Mm -hmm. So with these are slightly oversized, you remill your main cap register to get a good tight fit. Mm -hmm. Then we go back through, clamp it down with 625 plus So what's studs. usually the um, limitation of a stock main, right? Because that's usually the, the first limitation of the Jay-Z's once you start producing big power, right? So what happens is, is the, the bolts stretch, they release their torque, and then you can actually get a stress fracture in the middle here. Uh, for the most part, with high mileage 2Js, depending on power level, you're seeing mobility in the registers. So the actual main cap, you'll pull the bolts out and the main cap like just just comes out because yeah, it easy, moves. Yeah. yeah. Like you'd say like, what, like 700 is usually the number? Yeah. Today, these days, 750, 800, yeah, um, if but, you have a good health 2J. But back in the day, it was a lot lower. Yeah. We just didn't have finite control over ignition timing and that sort For of stuff. For sure. So the built mains are a must. It seems like a must. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Now we have a short block capable of all the power we need. We want to make. I mean, my goal is around 850, which is should be plenty. Think uh, we can crack a thousand with this one? You could put a turbo on it that would make a thousand horsepower, but that's not. You're not going to have any mid. You're not going to have the transient response that you want it's, without nitrous, true. which exactly. adds complexity. So this goes back to our last video with the R34, where we talked about turbo sizes and how we could. Your turbo size will move your power band, right? Give so, and take. Give and take, right? So we can use a smaller turbo so it hits a little bit harder. And with modern turbos, they can actually hold out efficiency a little better. But of course, you are peaked at a certain point. So if we wanted to crack a thousand, we'd probably have to go with a pretty big turbo. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm really hoping we don't need a thousand. <laughs> I'm really hoping we don't need it. The short block, can it hold a thousand horsepower? Is yeah, question. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would rate this probably at 1300 horsepower or something like that, but. You certainly don't need to make that. <laughs> um, you could do it with nitrous, you know, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say like right now you're going to be fully competitive the way that it is if you need to up the spice later than you know a 250 yeah. shot or something like that make a turbo change but considering the turbo that we have we haven't probably that's not divulged but considering the turbo i know and he knows that the turbo for this setup is going to be 
perfect the way it is. So, you know, meaty mid-range, 850, hard hitting. Um, don't worry about that torque limitation. Like, you know, we're constantly talking about like limiting boost in rush and torque. Yeah, well this one mid. we can just actually let yeah, it Yeah, just let it eat. We're yeah. always trying, I'm always trying to play safe on these engines and this one we can actually get after. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be very exciting. Right, so just as important as the bottom end is the head itself, right? Since we're Jay-Z, we can go a couple different options. VVTI, not VVTI, GE, GTE, right? So what we went with was a GTE VVTI head. Love VVTI, it's a great tool. We got modern tech, we can utilize it. It helps us with that low end that we want, that punch that we're looking for. And we went with the GTE head because, well, it ended up just being more cost effective for us. We had to do less porting on the, on the head since the GTE ports are a little bit more usable than GE ports. I was able to buy this head brand new, which was really nice. So the supporting head package on that, of course, we went with Calford Cams. As you guys know, we've been working with them a lot this year. Um, they've done us really, really good, amazing products. Really cool group of guys. And well, they make an awesome package for this. So let's open this thing up and Let's check it out. I was able to get a brand new head. Instead of finding a 20 year old head that has been ran through, I was able to get one brand new for not much more stuff. So. Ooh. So we sent this thing out to Dave at Head Games and he, well, not only got the head ready for all the valve train, but he gave us a small port, a little pocket port. It's hard to tell on the camera, but the harshest point of the airflow right there, see the bigger, the greatest angle, that's gonna be our biggest restriction. So that's really all we had to clean up right there. Now you can go crazy with porting, right? And that is another thing that is, well, great debate overall, but a lot of guys with the, pro, we'll call a pro level build, they keep it simple with a little pocket port here and uh, it'll be a good recipe for us. So one of the coolest bits on the head is a Kelfer product here. So if you could tell our little buckets here, they're black, right? And that is because they are DLC coated. Now DLC coating is basically a super low friction coating that doesn't add almost any material to the surface itself, but what? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's yeah. diamond-like carbon. That's where DLC comes from. It's so wild. It's extremely they, They've hard. done testing with DLC coating and you could run these things basically dry for a very long time and they don't wear away. So mm -hmm. having that on your valve train, especially when we have upgraded springs like crazy seat pressure, it really, really adds up. And with Kelford, we converted to a solid bucket, right? Because before they were shimmed. And if you guys remember from my 1JZ, when I brought the limiter up because I was desperate, we threw a bucket and guess what? It damaged the head and the, the engine was, well, I mean, the head, the head got damaged. The, the bottom end was still good. I got lucky. I got very lucky. Of course, since we're gonna be pushing this thing to its limits, we wanna make sure they're solid and that can't happen. So what's important about these is back in the day, what we used to do is we would take like one ZZ buckets and then we would actually send them out and have them DLC coated for like an extra 20 bucks a bucket. Mm -hmm. So you're talking, you got 24 buckets, they're 25 to $28 a piece. Mm -hmm. You're doing DLC So what Seamus is trying to ridiculous. say, it's way more cost effective <laughs> to just get free <laughs> DLC coated uh, yeah, buckets from buy, Telford yeah. and you buy them to by half price. By half price, yeah. which is insane. And they're in sock, like yeah. you can't beat that. Like that's a huge, huge thing for the game, so. And underneath these buckets, I, I'm not gonna try to take one out, but <laughs> they have one of their, their new uh, Beehive Spring Combo. We talked about the cams a little bit. Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> the 264, 272, this is basically the same cams that we put in the FRS, minus the fact that we have VVTI now, right? So you could always put your cams, right? With cams is trading off efficiencies. And so we want to spec a cam that puts the efficiency where we want it for a power band, which essentially hard hitting, right? We want to make sure the mid range hits hard. We want to break this thing loose. And once they're loose, they're easier to spin versus saving all the power for the top end. Like we'll say like maybe a street, like a fast street car or like a drag car. So that's why if you're, if you're wondering why I went with a smaller cam, it's the Jimmy Oak spec right there. Like that. If you want to order cams, just tell them the Oak spec. I'll get you right. Up below, shop cams. Kelford Beehive setup is super nice. I believe they're like a 95 pound base pressure, kind of middle of the road. Um, they have lots of clearance before coil bind because of the beehive shape. So middle you can of the road it sounds bad. Why does middle, like, well, what do you mean by middle? So you can go super high on pressure, <laughs> right? Like way high, like yeah, yeah, valve train destroyingly high. Mm -hmm. um, but then some guys will argue that, oh, you don't need to even be 90 PSI. Now the problem is, is revs plus boost, right? What's holding that valve open? Mm -hmm. You have positive pressure rushing in the port mm -hmm. and you've got revs. So mm -hmm. that valve has to recover, meaning come back and touch down to Which seat. Which the spring is its only fighting force, Exactly. Right? and you have boost pushing against the back side of it. 9,000, 8,000 RPM plus 30 pounds of boost. So they rate these at 95 pounds of base pressure, I believe, 95 uh -huh. or 96, 30 pounds of boost, 9,000 RPM. Needless to say, they're really good. Okay. <laughs> and and to, to, to paraphrase Seamus, yeah, yeah. they're very good. I did my due diligence. I bought a brand new head. We got a full brand new valve train cam package from Kel everything from Kelford. And we sent it off to get it fully done up. But the only one that messed up in this situation is 
Toyota. <laughs> I think I said Chevy. No, it's, this is crazy. <laughs> we actually found this out t today. Brand new from Toyota. They forgot to finish machining one small thing. So look at this. You see this hole right here, right? A little drain back for the cam seal. It's it's all the way through, right? You can see that? My finger? The light, you see it? Mm -hmm. Now if we come over, yeah, there we go. If we come over here, to, to, Toyota's finishing piece. <laughs> they didn't fully drill that out. So that would have piss my cam seal out very quickly in the dyno. So we have to do some machining today. To a brand new head. To a brand new head. <laughs> it would have been blame the engine builder. Blame the engine builder. Get <laughs> him on the phone, call him up. He sucks. We love you, Toyota. We think so highly of you. Why'd you do this to us? <laughs> Whatever. It's gonna drill bit. Okay, Clickbait, Toyota. <laughs> Screwed us. <laughs> Let's see how much we get the drill. Right? So that's you. So close, Toyota. So close. I, bought, I bought a brand new drill to do this operation. Yeah, yeah you saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm putting the blood in your hands. You want to start back here and get a running start? No. <laughs> so the chips didn't get all fucking stuck. If you or anyone you know have bought in a brand new Jay-Z head in the last four months, just check it real quick. Some RP shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Nah, might as well be good to me. So we've done quite a bit of talking, but I really want you guys to know what we got going on here. I really want you guys to know the ins and outs of this car. You know, there's still things we have to figure out. Um, that was my first time building a pro car, so I'm doing as much due diligence as I can and taking as many opinions in as I can, but also using some of my own opinion to, to kind of forge it all together, right? There's a, well, you know what they say, like 100 ways to skin a cat, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, why are you giggling? <laughs> Spoon said that like two weeks ago. I've never fucking heard that You've one You've never before. heard that thing before? <laughs> Whatever, maybe it's an East Coast thing, I don't know. A lot more money still to spend, but. It'll be worth it. Oh, I'm tripping. Oh, Use that dad, Use that dad, dad strength. Get up in there. <laughs> Pants too tight. Come on! <laughs> that's it. That's it. What's up? Ah. Just slinging Jay Z's with the boys. Uh. I'm bringing baby James home from the hospital all over again, you know? That's it. That's a heavy baby. I don't know. James was huge too. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, we got the goods. Seamus did the deed. Thank you for putting that together. Yeah, dude. Oh, like, it, it feels good. Like having an engine we know is gonna be good. You know, like it's not a mystery engine for once, which is incredible. So. All right, let's get this baby home safe. You two magic people, boys. We're here. <laughs> oh, that works too. Oh, look! At look at this. that. <laughs> Watch the paint. Home now. Real street. Now you're gonna make real power, dude. You like that? <laughs> that is sick. We see it on real like fast cars, like Supras and stuff, right? The green sign. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. That's if you want to go fast, baby. Go fast. fast. This looks like a very nice Chain platform. Yeah, right. To start with. It looks like a very expensive platform. You yeah, know, hey. th this one hurt. This one hurt. Yeah. You're still recovering. When you want to make four digits, you're gonna spend. Five. Five six. Digits. Six. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make four digits, you got to spend six. That's like... Write yeah. that down. Ouch. So, when baby James is watching this in 18 years, this is your college fund. Sorry, bud. You want some head? <laughs> Bro, I got the 2J. What do you think? This thing's a 3J. 3JZ, I this like it. This thing's a 3JZ. 3JZ, right? right? Leave her on there. All Leave right, yeah, we'll don't, don't, don't be touching it. Dude, that's some real shit. <laughs> <laughs> we just got a bunch of work to get this engine together and a bunch of fancy pieces going on it and I can't wait to go through each step of the process. So, hope you guys are excited. And, well, I mean, how can you not be? It's Jay-Z. The best of the best. The best of the best. Right, right, Bri? Jay-Z best. Yeah, there, I mean, 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's very apparent we still have a very raw shell here, but we have a lot of work in this car so far. And honestly, now that we have most of the major components, the last thing we're really waiting on is the diff, which is getting built right now. Um, we will be able to mock everything up and it should really accelerate the whole process, right? So now we can get really get to the core of it and really divvy down in this car because the drift season is upon us. But we have plenty to talk about, but we'll save that for the future. We've done enough, talk enough talking today. So we have to say huge shout out again to my buddy Seamus down at Taylor Chassis Solutions for helping us out in this build. Seamus actually has his own YouTube channel, and he might be a little embarrassed by me telling you this, but <laughs> you guys should go check it out. He's still getting a feel for it, but he's doing amazing. His filmer and editor is amazing also. They've been putting together beautiful content. If you want to see the more nerd side of things, Seamus is the guy for it. So we'll put the YouTube channel in the description. We won't forget. And if anything, go there, give him a like, give him a subscribe, show him love from me it would mean a lot so thank you guys big time we got a lot of assembly to do but i'm it's it's just a 2j we've done it a million times before i'm very excited for it we get to have we get to do the fun stuff right the the big instant gratification part so it's good for us so you guys know the deal like comment subscribe stay tuned for more content we'll see you guys very shortly